adding OctoPrint to your 3D printer, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. So I'm still at this Airbnb and I figured I'd use the opportunity to modify the 3D printer. Basically, I want to add an external computer to it, in this case a Raspberry Pi, to let me remotely control it or control it from my computer. This has a number of advantages. One of them's being you yeah, don't have to deal with SD cards. Now, I love the Monoprice Select Mini V2. Not sponsored, I just, this thing's literally fallen out of the back of a truck twice and still kicks. So it's just very robust for, you know, traveling around in the van and whatnot. However, it does have one flaw and, well, it's got a couple of flaws, but one major flaw, and that is the micro SD card slot has a gap in it where if you put the SD card in just right, it can completely miss the slot and basically get stuck inside the 3D printer and you either have to abandon it or take it all apart to get it back out. And that can be really frustrating when you're in the middle of a project and you quickly put the SD card back in and you just hear it go click and fall into the machine. On top of that main issue, this will also let me do time lapses and a lot of other cool functionality that a software called OctoPie has, or OctoPrint, or OctoPrint on an OctoPie. This is a relatively easy project to get started, but OctoPie has a huge capability and just different things you can do with it with cameras and relays and sensors and automated printing and port forwarding. So we're probably gonna do a series on this, but today we're just gonna get started with a simple setup OctoPie, make it print something over Wi-Fi so you no longer need to deal with SD cards. Let's get started. Some things you'll need if you're following along at home. Of course, a 3D printer. Anything with a USB input should work just fine. A Raspberry Pi or other simple computer like an Intel NUC. You can also install this on Windows and use your desktop if you were so inclined. SD card and SD card reader. The relevant USB cables for your 3D printer and powering your computer. So to get started here, we're going to make sure in our disk management tool, in this case, just partition manager on Windows, that you have deleted any existing partitions. Now, the tool we're gonna to use later should automatically do this, but I have had some issues where it doesn't properly completely wipe the disk, and it has a different bootloader set up from a different OS, and the Pi doesn't boot it, or something like that. So just to be safe, we're gonna make sure all of our partitions are deleted. In this case, I've already done that. Next up, we're going to pull up Raspberry Pi Imager. Now, I believe this tool works on Linux and Mac. If not, you can do this with DD or some other tools and just download the ISO. Now, you scroll down to Other Specific Purpose OS, Octopi, Octopi, Choose Storage. Make sure that your SD card is selected. And before we hit right, I don't know why this isn't a menu that's a little more obvious, but in the Raspberry Pi Imager, you can hit Control Shift X. And before you even bake the SD card and need to edit text files, you can configure your Wi-Fi right here. And it's great. I love this tool so much because it makes it so much easier to just set up Wi-Fi. I don't need to, like I said, configure text files after writing the SD card, or I don't need to pull out a keyboard and mouse and monitor and hook that all up. I can just set it up right here and it will automatically join the Wi-Fi. So be sure to do that and then hit write. And now we wait. And there we go. It's automatically ejected the SD card and we're good to go. Believe it or not, that was basically the hardest part. So long as you actually put it into a Pi with built-in Wi-Fi. So when I was setting up for this video yesterday, I made a pretty noob mistake. And uh, I figured I'd, I'd share that with y'all to let you know that yes, glitch is fallible. So I have a lot of Raspberry Pis. In particular, I have a lot of Raspberry Pi 3B 1.2s from like 2015. I haven't done anything with these in upwards of 9, 10 months. So I did a quick Google search. Is the Pi 3B Wi-Fi capable? And the first result was yes. The Pi 3B is from 2016 on has built in Wi-Fi. Great. I proceeded to spend two and a half hours wondering why I wasn't getting a Wi-Fi connection. This was made even more confusing by the fact that while debugging, I connected via ethernet and it actually got a lease from the router. And so Octopi was in my router, but I couldn't talk to it. 
After stepping away for a while and having a fresh look at the project, which I recommend any time you do when you're stuck for more than 45 minutes to an hour because wasting an hour and a half stinks, I came back, put the SD card, well, I had to reflash the SD card so that it would be set up for a Pi 3B Plus instead of a Pi 3B, set it all up, and it connected straight away. I proceeded to dig a little deeper on whether or not the 3B had Wi-Fi. The answer was no, the 3B does not have built-in Wi-Fi. So either switching to the 3B Plus out of the gate or using one of these guys, I could have saved two and a half hours. So don't make the same mistake I did. Okay, once your Pi is all booted, you can browse to octopi.local and follow the setup wizard. Restore from backup. Well, if you're following this tutorial, you don't have a backup. Default printer profile, we will call it mini, auto price, select mini v2. This will probably be different for you because you are not using the same printer as me, almost certainly. In my case, these are all 120 millimeters cubed. Heated bed, heated not no heated chamber, no custom bounding box. Normally, you should be able to hit connect, but for me, this won't work. First off, my printer isn't powered on. Whoops. Now you should make sure to run the update as soon as you get the opportunity to, and it's as simple as that. That's the great thing about Octopi is everything more or less just works at this point. It was a little rocky starting out, but these days it's push button, get exactly what you want. The UI is a little simple, but it works. Oh yeah, here's a fun thing. It'll even tell you when your Pi is running on a two week of a power supply. I plan to fix this in the next video by eliminating the need for an external power supply using a fun little hack and some other components, but that's for the next video. So specifically for my printer, I need to go into the plugin manager and hit get more and install the monoprice connection fix. Now, a very select few printers handle serial a little bit differently and you can get fails and other issues. Interesting. There we go, now it seems to be working. As I was saying, you can get some little hitches and issues when trying to connect to the printer in the main menu here. But now that I installed that, I can go to serial port, baud rate, hit connect. If I go over to control, we can actually make it move. Hit the home button and it'll do the homing routine. Now, here's another thing we're gonna cover in this series is the webcam. You can view your printer and start prints and do everything from anywhere in the world and make sure it's running safely. Now, it does tell you not to do that because 3D printers are inherently dangerous machines because they get hot, so you probably don't want to leave it unattended, but you can. And that's the great thing about Octoprint is it adds so much capability to a printer. There are so many plugins, so much after like third-party support and stuff that you can make it do just about anything. Uh, you can load files to it remotely. It even has a built-in slicer, so you no longer need to use that Cura or G Slicer or any of the other slicers on your machine, which means you can also load files from an Android phone or an iOS device or anything. So you end up with this fully self-contained printer, just add power. Speaking of power, well, we'll save that for an even future video. This is gonna be a pretty big series about modding this 3D printer, Octopi, and some future ideas. So be sure to stick around. Uh, let me know if you have any specific questions or if you have any suggestions for plugins. Make sure to leave those down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.